Exercise 9, SOLIDWORKS 2016. This exercise, we're going to look at the top-down uh, assembly functionality inside SOLIDWORKS, some very basic functionality. Uh, it does get much more in-depth than other uh, units, but in this case, uh, what you see here is a pencil sharpener. We're going to go ahead and see how that's built inside here. So I'm going to go ahead and just close this. All right, let's start off with the new part, uh, new assembly. Hit OK and just hit the cancel button up here and let's go ahead and save this as our E9 E9 pencil sharpener or if you could just save it as E9 okay now we're gonna go ahead and insert a new part so under insert go to new part select the front plane. This automatically coincides the planes of my part to the planes of the assembly. And you can see right here we see it's listed. I'm gonna go um, and I'm just gonna leave this. We're gonna have it built inside the assembly. There's another option where you could save it different names through Solid Explorer as well. There's different options but we'll just keep the generic ones here. Okay so with that being said go to the center rectangle, draw out a rectangle, at the origin, go to Smart Dimension, and dimension it at 2 by 2. Extrude that 1 inch, and I'll select the front face and start a sketch, and draw a circle at the center, and it's going to be 1.25. Extrude that a half inch and now select the top face of that circle the front face I should say start a sketch draw a circle at the origin and dimension that at 0.5 go to features and extruded cut for this one and just select through all notice the modeling in this exercise is very basic so uh, that's just so you can focus more on the idea of the top-down assemblies. And in this case, we're going to go to the fillet. We're going to type in 0.125 for the fillets and select these edges. Select this face and these four edges. Do not select the back edges. Notice the back edges are all sharp. Okay, and finally, one more fillet, 0.25, this edge right here. You could go ahead and right click and change the part color. Beware, it won't update until you exit the assembly in most cases. So, uh, and with the plastic, high gloss, I'm going to go with the blue. Okay, now flip it around, select this face, and shell it at 0.1 for the wall thickness. Now we need to put a lip on here, so I'm going to select this face, start a sketch, right click on this inside edge, and you have two options, select tangency or loop. Tangency works really well to capture all the inside edges, on this case, as long as there's a fillet connecting them all. Now we can hit convert entities, go to features, extrude boss base, 0.25 for the height, and then select Thin Feature. Select and change the Thin Feature to 0 0.05, so it's half the thickness, creating the lip that you see there. If it doesn't come out right, remember there's the reverse switch, so that it should be on the semi-outside. This should be flush, essentially, on the inside. Hit the green check. Okay, and that completes that front part. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn off Edit Component. Edit Component is one of the most important icons used in this exercise. So be aware, for top-down, it enables you to edit specific components that you select. And then when you're done editing them, make sure you turn it off. Because if you continue on thinking you're editing another part, you might end up editing the wrong part. Okay, now with that done, let's go ahead and insert another new part. And this time, zoom up on the back side and see this little ledge here. Go ahead and drop it on that ledge. It changes the part that's not currently being edited transparent. Now, if you don't like the transparency setting here, you could turn on Maintain or Opaque for transparency. I'm going to keep it on 
because it is very useful in letting you know which part you're actually editing. The part that's opaque is the one you're editing. The part that is transparent is the one not being edited. Or as you see, okay, so now I'm gonna select that face and I'm gonna steal the edges of it by hitting convert entities. Now you can see this black, uh, these object lines, they have an on edge relationship back to this part. So if I ever change the blue part, this next part, the rear part, will actually update with it. So I'm gonna go to features and just extrude that. Uh, we'll extrude that one inch and hit apply. And here you can see it's opaque, it's solid. Okay, now select this face and we're gonna use under insert features, dome. And dome that face a half inch and turn off continuous dome to get that nice rounded tangency following the outside edges. Now you can select this face through and hit shell and it needs to be 0 0.05 for the wall thickness and hit apply. Okay, the next thing we need to do is make a clipping mechanism on this rear part. So you could select, uh, hit the little arrow to the left of your actual part here and select the right plane of it. Reason why I'm selecting this right plane versus the right plane of the pencil sharpener assembly is because the fewer links you have, the less issues you may have later on. There are times when you definitely need to use planes and surfaces from other parts or the assembly, um, but remember it's building a link back to that part or assembly that you just drew off of. Thus, if you separate this part and want to make a change to it, you might have to edit in the context of the assembly to do that versus just the part alone. So it's not a bad practice to try and, if, as long as you can, use the ones inside the actual part that you're currently editing. Okay, I'm going to start a sketch on the right plane. I'm going to hit my space bar and go to the right view orientation, and I'm going to change this to wireframe. I'm going to draw a center line in the middle because whatever I want on the top, I want on the bottom as well. So I'm going to mirror this across. Now I'm going to take the circle and right on this edge here, notice it's the second edge below, in, sandwiched between those two vertical lines. Click and drag out a small circle. Try not to touch the edges because you might accidentally capture a tangent relationship, which we don't want. And this is only going to be 0.05 and then position the center to the left edge of 0.125. Remember you could change the under here IPS to three decimal places if you want to see the higher precision, but note that it is in there. Okay, now that I have that in position, I'm just going to hit escape and select everything. Go to mirror entities, we'll see a duplicate on the bottom. Now I could go ahead and go back to Shaded with Edges, and we could see what we're going to do. I'm going to go to Features, Extrude Boss Base, and I'm going to select Mid Plane. This divides that circle up on both sides symmetrically, but it's a little wide, so I'm just going to reduce it to a quarter of an inch, 0.25, and hit Apply. Now we have half of our clipping mechanism, or locking mechanism, that's going to hold these two pieces together. Now we have to edit this part, to put the other side on it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off Edit Component. Now I'm going to edit the blue part. I'm going to click on the blue part and you have a, a quick launch option here or you can use the one at the top of the feature tree where it says Assembly and Edit Component over here. So either one is fine. Notice the back part now turns to a different color. It turns transparent. Now I'm going to hit the space bar and again go to the right view orientation and I'm going to turn on wireframe once again. Now we could see our little circle. Notice it's only a half circle now because it was attached to this wall here and it just joined with it. It's all one now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I want an, about five thousandths of clearance here so I could actually use, uh, first of all, uh, did I, do I have my sketch? I want to select the right plane and start a sketch. And that's the right plane again. Oh, you know, I didn't want the, uh, notice I picked the wrong part, the E, the part six, which is actually the rear. I'm going to turn off that. I did not want that sketch to be there. I'm going to minimize the E, uh, part six, and I'm going to go back to the part five. And here in the right plane, actually, before you do that, make sure you click on the part five. 
Yours might say part one, part two, by the way. It's just how many parts you've been editing. So it might be a little different than mine. Just no, look on the list here. Okay, and I'm gonna go to edit that part. So that's the front of the pencil sharpener I'm editing. And now I could select from there the right plane and start a sketch. I know that was a bit confusing, but I was trying not to tie down a reference back to the other part. Again, reducing those really helps mitigate issues later on. It's just a good practice. Okay, now I could go ahead and select this, and I'm just going to use the offset entities, and I just want a small offset of about five thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to apply that there. And then just be aware you're going to need to close it by drawing a line across here. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Or actually, rather than mirror again using the sketch, let's mirror it as a feature just to mix things up a little bit. Show you another technique or remind you of another technique. Let me go here and we'll shade this. And so we could see our profile. Now I'm going to go to Features and Extrude Cut. Now remember it was 0.25 wide and it was through the mid plane, but we want to add a little clearance. So let's add, make it like 0.26. That will give us five thousandths of an inch on either side. So it's a little bit bigger. And here if you zoom up you can actually see there's that clearance in there. Hit the green check mark. And so now cut that out. Now we can mirror that to the other side, this time using the feature mirror. Again, not a bad idea to use the planes inside the part you're editing. The way you know which part you're editing, by the way, also, notice the blue color of the text. That means that part is being edited. Notice the other part below, the rear, is only black. So, with that being said, let's use the top plane as a mirror plane. Select Mirror, and now the feature to mirror, go ahead and you could usually just select like inside there and it will know to pick up on that cut extrude. And we'll see a preview down below and just hit the green check mark to apply. And now we have the cutouts in there. So notice how we went back and forth stealing information from one to use in the other. So if any of these things ever update, they'll update together. And in fact, let's test that out. Turn off edit component, roll this back up by hitting that little arrow, and now let's uh, hit rebuild. Now that I'm going to change this rear part to transparency, so because uh, it's it really supposed to be usually so we could see through it. So in this case, I'm going to click on this and I'll go with high gloss. But let's look for a transparent, actually clear, and we could go with polypropylene. And if we want, we could add a little tint to it. Let's add a little. Uh, aquamarine tint to it. Okay, so here we have it. Now the ultimate test. Double click on the blue part and you'll see the dimensions appear. Let's say we got information, we want a larger reservoir for the pencil. We want it to be you know, about 30% larger. So we could change this to 3, hit rebuild, and both parts update simultaneously. And so as a very basic example of top-down modeling, there you go. Again, some people don't even, because this is so basic, some people I've had online say, no, that's not really it. But technically, you're, when it comes down to top-down, you're using information from one part to another. And this is just an extraordinarily simplified example. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, I want to show you how to explode this, because there's a drawing that, is great for review in this case and actually I'm going to double click on that change it back to the two and then don't forget you might have to hit rebuild up here if you didn't hit the rebuild there okay first of all we want to explode this so you go to explode a view just click on the blue part and grab the manipula ha manipulator handle in the Z direction drag that out hit apply and then up at the top it's not a bad idea to right click and collapse it again and let's go ahead and save this and we want to save all, and we'll save them internally. Okay, now we could go to File, Make Drawing from Assembly. 
We'll go with a small A and C landscape. Hit OK. Over on the right, we could see our isometric exploded. Let's drop that in while we have it. And then over here on the left, we could change it to shaded with edges. A little easier on the eyes. Okay, let's go back to that view palette. Click on that little button. Let's bring in a front and a top. And hit escape. Now we might want to see these two with the tangent edges with font. So we could control select them, select tangent edges with fonts. A little easier to, to look at and interpret versus all the object lines. Okay, let's make a section view right here. Just hit the green check mark, go to view layout, go to section, make sure it's set to vertical and lock it into the center. Click and hit the green check. Auto hatching is automatically applied. Drag it to the right. Now this little area here we want to show a detail of for the clipping mechanism. Click on Detail View. Click in that little region there, draw it a small circle, and drag it up here. I notice it automatically scales it. You can move this little B out of the way there. And now we could add some different types of dimensions. Let's go to Annotation, and we just want some basic uh, dimensions here just to show the all overall. So I'm going to click here like an inspection dimension and then find the point over here. Click and we'll drag that up. And then over here on the left we could select inspection dimension. And then we'll just add one over here as well. And again inspection dimension. Hit escape and you can drag these and spread them out a little bit more. Now to fix this, just right click and go to Edit Sheet Format. Double click on that and let's change it to a smaller font so it fits. And now right click and Edit Sheet and it should bring us right back. Now we'll put in a Bill of Materials, select this view, go to Tables, Bill of Materials, and just hit the green check, drop that up here, hit escape. Let's drag this down and out of the way. Okay, now we could add some balloons. Go to balloon, and since there's only two, we're not going to do auto balloon. Just select some edges here, and there's our balloons. And finally, you could put in your name if you wanted below here using the note tool, or I will just put in actually, in this case, E9. Actually, this is L9 for Lab 9. <clears throat> and that concludes Exercise 9.